Don't forget to pick up your copy of Football Game Plan's latest book release, The Go-Go Offense by Coach Brennan Marion, as Coach Marion takes you through the ins and outs of his offense, the most explosive offense in college football that's lighting up the scoreboards and tearing up the college football fields. You can pre-order your copy today by going to footballgameplan.com slash go-go offense. Welcome to Football Game Plan, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Mike McCarthy is your producer today. It's the summertime and preseason is just around the corner in the NFL. And we'll get you ready for the upcoming 2019 NFL season as we preview the Los Angeles Rams. Now, as we kick off the season preview, let us take a look at some of the key storylines heading into the season as we go into our four-minute offense. Over in Los Angeles, Todd Gurley's knee injury was a major factor in his productivity for the Rams in the playoffs. Suffering from an arthritic knee, Gurley wasn't able to have the same burst that he showed for most of the regular season in 2018. In the playoffs, he only had 30 touches for 165 yards. Without him healthy, the Rams faltered in the Super Bowl against the Patriots. If he can have a healthy 2019, Gurley will surely lead the Rams back to the NFC West title. In each of the last three seasons, Jared Goff has gotten better as a quarterback, with increases in his completion percentage, passing yards, and touchdowns as he gained more experience. The two work great together, and if this continues, Goff could be on his way to an all-pro season. His consistency, along with McVay's play calling, will be the keys to success for the Rams. Aaron Donald is one of the best defensive tackles the game has ever seen, but can he continue his Hall of Fame pace? An interior disruptor and pass rusher extraordinaire, Donald has always struck fear into offensive linemen. Even though he saw double and even triple teams last year, he still had 20 and a half sacks. Keep an eye on his stats to see whether or not he can break the sack record. The Rams built their defense on acquisitions. Free agent additions Clay Matthews at linebacker and Eric Weddle at safety are veterans known for their playmaking abilities. They also acquired Aqib Tlaib and Marcus Peters via trade recently. How will all these different personalities mesh together? It's up to defensive coordinator Wade Phillips to coordinate them into a unit capable of reaching the Super Bowl again. It's time to put this team under the microscope and go position by position to see where they stand as we head into the 2019 season. And we'll start on the offensive side of the ball at the quarterback position. Statistically, Jared Goff has gotten better each and every season in L.A. and even got the Rams to the Super Bowl last year. Yet the question still remains on whether or not he's truly a difference maker at the position. I think he definitely is a guy that you can win with, which should be more than enough. And although in the Super Bowl game, we all witnessed him come up small during the clutch and really had problems putting that game away for Los Angeles. The good part about youth is that you have a chance to correct the mistake. And I would say the Rams are stable here at quarterback with the fourth year pro. Los Angeles has a pretty strong and dynamic backfield heading into 2019. The hope is that Ty Gurley can be what he was prior to the back end of the playoffs where we saw him not be as effective. His health and being at full strength is huge for this offense as he's the straw that stirs this drink. Helping this year with some of the backfield low, this rookie third round pick, Daryl Henderson out of Memphis, who in my opinion is tailor made for this offensive attack. He gives them another home run hitter in addition to Gurley, that's also a very solid receiver coming out of the backfield. And bringing back Malcolm Brown was a plus, and hopefully this season we'll see more of last year's six-round pick John Kelly as he's another talented back that deserves more playing time. The Rams are deep, talented, and explosive on the perimeter. They also boast a high level of versatility as well. Brandon Cooks, Robert Woods, and Cooper Cup are as strong of a trio as there is in the NFL. And getting Cup back healthy is going to be big as he's a very integral part to their passing game. And we saw young guys like Adaro Hodge and Josh Reynolds seize opportunities last year, just strengthening the depth here overall. And keep an eye on undrafted rookie free agent Simba Webster out of Eastern Washington. He's got some explosive shiftiness to his game and could be a camp surprise. Now, the tight end position on this squad is very underrated. The Rams have good threats in both Gerald Everett and Tyler Higby, both figure to have an even bigger role this season in the passing game. I also like both undrafted rookie free agents, Kendall Blanton out of Missouri and Keenan Brown out of Texas State. Both give them the blocking element that they get from Johnny Munt, but they also provide more of a receiving threat as well. The offensive line for the Rams is another area where I feel as though they're in great shape. They lose Roger Saffold to free agency, which is a significant loss, but the hope is that second-year player Joseph Noteboom can step in and fill those shoes left on the left side. They are high on Noteboom and don't expect a drop-off in production. They are also excited about new starting center Brian Allen, who is also a second-year player. He's replacing John Sullivan at the position and figures to add much more athleticism up front. 
Both Rob Havenstein and Andrew Whitworth are really good tackles, and Austin Blight returns as a starter at right guard. It's been a draft and develop philosophy here for the Rams up front, so expect second-year player Jamil Demby and rookies Bobby Evans, David Edwards, and Matt Caskey to be groomed, developed, and put in a rotation along the offensive front. Now, here are my grades for the Rams' offensive units. On the defensive line is where you will find the league's best defensive player and defensive tackle, Aaron Donald. The six-year pro is coming off of a 20-and-a-half sack season and 25 TFLs, both of which were league leading. This is the second time in his career that he's racked up 20-plus TFLs, which is nuts where you consider where he's playing along the defensive line. Now, playing alongside him is Michael Brockers, whose versatility makes him a threat in his own right. And expect a big year from fellow defensive end John Franklin Myers, who really started to come on strong the latter part of the year and into the playoffs. Things will get interesting after those three as Tanzil Smart and rookie Greg Gaines will vie for the starting spot at nose. And keep an eye out for Boogie Roberts, the undrafted rookie free agent from San Jose State who could surprise in training camp. The linebacking core looks to be better this season as the Rams were able to re-sign Dante Fowler and brought in Clay Matthews via free agency. Fowler tested the waters a little bit before re-upping for a one-year deal with LA, and Matthews figures to play in a variety of roles within his defense. He can see time in both inside as well as outside backer. Veteran Corey Littleton gives them a playmaking presence at one of the inside linebacker positions, and LA has some young players that are brimming for expanded roles this upcoming season like inside linebacker Micah Kaiser and reserve outside linebacker Justin Lawler. Now, I thought Samson Ebucon played solid last season and figures to be more of a rotational player now that Matthews is in the fold. I would also keep an eye on Obena Okoronkwo and rookie undrafted free agent Troy Reader. Okoronkwo was injured most of last season but has that twitchiness to his game that could be a, a problem and Reader is a bigger inside linebacker that has good instincts and range in coverage. In the secondary, the Rams are pretty solid across the board. Both Akib Talib and Marcus Peters form a strong duo. While they tend to give up some plays, you can't argue the fact that the ones that they do make be game-changing ones. Nikhil Roby Coleman is one top-notch slot corner with good mirror and match skills, and they have a good list of depth guys as well with Troy Hill and Dante Dion, as well as rookie third-round pick David Long out of Michigan, who has very good man skills, especially in press coverage. Now, the safety position got a boost this offseason with the addition of Eric Weddle coming over in free agency from the Ravens. He gives them a ball hawk who's apt to making a difference versus the run in the alley as well. His range will complement strong safety John Johnson extremely well, and Johnson is coming off of a strong second season in the NFL and was a big-time player in the playoffs. Rookie Taylor Rapp out of Washington is a great chess piece that'll get moved around the defense, and I thought he was a steal when they got him in round two, so he's going to have a big-time impact on this defense. Now, here is how I graded the Rams' defensive units. I'm excited about the Rams offense because one thing's for sure, they will move the football, they will put up points, and I think they can have a chance to do even more so this year with the addition of Darrell Henderson, who was my number one rated running back in this year's draft class. So they have a ton of speed, explosiveness, and big play capability on that offense. I'm gonna show you what we used to call our pony package in college, which is three wide receivers and two running backs on the field at the same time, no tight end. So again, three wide receivers, Two running backs, that was our pony package with the Raging Cajuns back in college and the offensive coordinator, Larry Edmondson, who's one of the best offensive coordinators in football. So I'm gonna show you what I would do with this personnel based off that personnel grouping. And like how I have it drawn up, draw, drawn up here, I'm sorry, Robert Woods, Daryl Henderson, Ty Gurley, Cooper Cup, and Brandon Cooks. As you can see, ton of explosiveness already on the field. And what we're gonna do is try to find a way to hit a deep ball downfield and we're gonna use these two guys as speed as decoy. So we're gonna put Daryl Henderson in the short motion here. As Jerry Goff drops back and opens up toward Henderson, he's faking his handoff here, sending Henderson out in the flat, faking the handoff to Ty Gurley and he's setting up shop in the pocket. Those two play fakes allow these receivers the opportunity to get open downfield. We call this a search route where you're gonna send Cooper Cup leaking over the middle of the field. Robert Woods take off down the side. Brandon Cooks does a good job of running that deep comeback route and Golf can do a good job of finding him. Blitz comes, he has an outlet right there in Darrell Henderson. But again, when you have this much speed and explosiveness on the field at the same time, 
what happens with defenses is that they get to they tend to get aggressive or not aggressive conservative and and want to play cautious because they don't want to get beat deep with speed but the problem is when you have two guys in the backfield like daryl henderson who is my number one tailback in this year's draft class and ty Gurley, who's a a plus talent and all pro talent you have to respect the run and that play action fake is going to give those speed guys on the outside all the opportunity and time they need to get deep which will result in a big play once again for the rams aaron donald is one of the best defensive players in the entire nfl and in my opinion should have won nfl mvp and he should win one at least before his career is over with but i'm going to show you how they can generate some pressure with aaron donald i know that's kind of easy to do when you have the talent of, of number 99 but sometimes when you draw it up it just looks a little different on, on the whiteboard so one quick way they can get pressure and we're going to try to get aaron donald coming on the outside uh i like john myers uh coming from stephen f austin john franklin myers a really good defensive lineman we're going to bring him on the inside because he played essentially a five tech or four eye with that lumberjack defense in college stepped up real well last year in, in the time he was able to get we're going to bring brockers over and we're going to have um fowler coming as well using his speed and explosiveness to try to beat the beat the uh tackle across his face so we're going to bring him across the face of the tackle trying to create a double team because we're going to bring brockers across the face of center and that weak side a gap 99 right here we're going to wait he's going to allow franklin myers to come through he's going to come around and then loop around and hopefully meet the quarterback back here that great closing speed that he has so again it's not real complicated there's nothing really uh complicated about what defenses defensive players are trying to do or defenders are trying to do or defensive coordinators are trying to do when you have great personnel it makes your job look real easy again football is an easy game but it makes it even easier when you have premier players like number 99 along your defensive line going to the rams one of the best offenses in the nfl Jared Goff is a guy who I think will end up falling because people just never think about it. Fantasy football differs from real football. And while I think that in real football, you should slide because the last five minutes of games, for me at least, he is not the Dak Prescott's of the world. He is Jared Goff's of the world. From a fantasy standpoint, he can put up fantasy points. Todd Gurley's Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley needs to go in the first round. I know Todd Gurley has the knee issue. And until I get more definitive word on it, Todd Gurley's Todd Gurley. What you just do is you take him in the first round and you know that the guy you need to take is, he needs to be taken in maybe the sixth, seventh round for latest is Daryl Henderson. Because it's the offense that runs through the running back and Daryl Henderson stand alone, which I wish he would have gone to the Raiders from the standpoint of getting on the field immediately. But apparently this, this is a good enough fit if Todd Gurley's knee doesn't work out. I'm willing to sacrifice a sixth round pick to solidify the Rams backfield because it's just too good. It's, it's, it's the Falcons backfield on steroids. So Gurley's okay to go in the first round, but you make doggone sure you get Darrell Henderson in that, that sixth round range, maybe seventh, if, if you can hold off. Brandon Cooks, Robert Woods, and Cooper Cup. Cooks is the clear guy that's the number one because he can blow up with the physical tools. But I've said this about other teams, you take the guy that falls out of the two. If you can't get Cooks in the fifth or sixth round, out of Robert Woods and Cooper Cup, and that'd probably be Cooper Cup because he's coming off the injury, you take the guy that falls. One of these guys is going to end up going in that ninth round. It's just the truth. It'll probably be Cup because of the injury. It might be Robert Woods because of the the name recognition of Cooper Cup uh, off of this. Woods seems to always be the guy that falls. But you take that guy. You take the second one. You don't you don't want to be the guy who takes the second receiver taken from the Rams team because he's going to be taken a little higher than he needs to. And Gerald Everett showed signs last year where he could ascend. Let's see what happens. This offense is capable of doing a lot of things. This is a defense that I don't like. It's got talent. It's got Aaron Donald, who might be the best player in football, period. But listen to the start and then just look through the season setup. At Carolina, it's a long ways away against Cam Newton. Home against New Orleans, not easy. At Cleveland, Cleveland's offense actually looks the way people expect. 
they might torch the Rams in a lot of ways. So you don't want the Rams off uh, defense, especially early on. And Greg Zerline, of course, one of the best kickers in the game. Troy Anthony here, bringing you the best bets for the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams win total opens up at over under 10 and a half games. At plus 110, I'm going with the over here. I believe the Rams will dominate once again this year, so I'm taking them to win the division as well at minus 182. And I'm doubling down on that for them to make the playoffs at minus 250. That's all for now. I'm Troy Anthony. Follow me on Twitter at Football Fandom, replacing the O's with zeros. I'm David Hassagan, and this is Huddle Up with Hassagan. We're going to fire some quick takes about the Los Angeles Rams, starting with this year's breakout candidates. Emory, who do you have? I look at the center, Brian Allen, having a significant impact on this offensive line. I think now he gets his opportunity to start. He's going to be a, a premier player in this league, and they need him to be a premier player for this offense. Defensively, John Franklin Myers out of Stephen F. Austin uh, last year stepped up really well in, in reserve. Dude, I think he's primed for a significant role and become a big-time playmaker on this Rams defense. This is a Rams team that relied a lot on youth. Who are the big rookie impacts this year for this team? Running back Daryl Henderson out of Memphis and safety Taylor Rapp out of Washington. Both guys were two of my top talents at the position. Henderson was my number one back. He has a great opportunity to be a good compliment to Ty Gurley. And Rapp was one of those guys we watched Washington on film. He was always making a play. Right. And I think he goes into a great situation where he can be a matchup piece defensively. Who are the X-Factors this year for this Rams team who came oh so close, it seemed, to really making cracking the top two or three teams in the league? Well, they were in the Super Bowl, and the reason why they didn't win it is probably because they didn't have a healthy Todd Gurley. So yeah. Todd Gurley is the next factor. If he's healthy and ready to go, his team is, has the capability of getting back to the Super Bowl. And yeah. Clay Matthews was brought in to be an impact player coming off the edge. They didn't really have that uh, that consistent threat. Uh, we don't know if he even is that consistent threat. They're hoping he is. So let's see what Clay Matthews can bring to the table for this Rams defense. Who do you think are going to be the training camp surprises this year for the Rams? I think you look at two guys that were on their roster last year. Jamil Demby, an uh, uh, undrafted guard out of Maine, um, has a chance to be a good reserve piece and, and probably see some significant time within this offensive front. And also Mike Kaiser, a guy they drafted last year out of Virginia, who was the best inside linebacker in college football. Right. They get him into their system last year. He was a special teams guy. I think now he's more primed for a significant role as a starter. If they plan to play Clay Matthews on the outside, then that opens up the inside for Kaiser. But if they put Clay Matthews on the inside, then Kaiser still has to find his way. But I think he's going to be a really good uh, player for the Rams. A lot of optimism around the runners-up from last year. Is there any concern for you for the Rams? The concern would be if uh, the running game without Gurley is, isn't what we think it is. I think they're going to be fine with Henderson, don't get me wrong, but Gurley makes us a different team. And if Jared Goff still has the stench from the Super Bowl, you can point yeah. to him and say, okay, he, he had to step up. He was a big reason why they didn't win that game. They probably should have blown out the Patriots. Um, yeah. So if he takes a step back, and let that Super Bowl loss really hang on them, it's going to be a problem for the Rams. Or defensively, when you look at them not, you know, they, they lost in Dominican Sue. Um, you know, can they fill that void that he had in the playoffs? He was a significant presence. So those are some concerns, but the optimism is the fact that a lot of their offense returns, and they can still put up 40 points a game. Emory Hunt is the playbook here, and joining me now is fellow football game plan analyst Troy Anthony for the Four Downs with the Czar segment continuing our preview of the Los Angeles Rams. And as we take a look at the road to the Super Bowl for the Rams, it's funny because this team was in the Super Bowl last year, and I think the reason why they didn't win was because of Jared Goff. And you saw how ineffective he was in the, the that game because this was a team whose defense gave them opportunities to blow the Patriots out. They could have blown out New England if their offense was what it was the entire season. So. I think in order for them to get back to the Super Bowl, Jared Goff has to shake off that Super Bowl stench that we saw this past February and really pick up what he did last season, carry it into the regular season, and then take that regular season performance into the playoffs. Now, granted, he's going to have a healthy uh, Cooper Cup back. They're going to have even more talent on offense with Daryl Henderson, the explosive tailback. So they're going to be fine on, on offense. I think mentally, Goff has to really shake out what, hap what happened in the Super Bowl and get back to playing with confidence. I agree, golf could have played way better in the Super Bowl, but I believe the reason why they lost that Super Bowl, they didn't have a healthy Todd Gurley. Now going into this season, we know that Gurley is a little bit banged up, he's having knee issues, so they're going to have to monitor his work a little throughout the season. That's where I think it was key that they drafted Henderson. 
to come in, spell Gurley a good amount of time. Don't let Gurley be that workhorse anymore. He's getting up there in age a little bit, but he, he has the injuries. You're going to need him for that playoff rush. You're going to need a healthy Gurley for that playoff rush. That's why they lost the Super Bowl last year. Hopefully that's not why, that hopefully that the opposite is why they win it this year. I think also their second level has to thrive. You talk about Clay Matthews joining this team. Uh, maybe Micah Kaiser can step up and be that inside thumper that they want in, in at the second level. I think their linebacking core stepping up and rising to the occasion could be the difference in this defense going from good to great. They were good last year. They don't have Indomitian Sue anymore, but now you look at the fact that they're going to try to win with pressure on the outside. If they can get better at the second level as far as applying pressure and also being good versus the run, consistently versus the run, because remember, that's what beat them last year in the Super Bowl. They couldn't stop the run when they mm -hmm. needed to, and that's what got lost in that game. So I look for their second level, their linebacking core, to step up. If they can bring the heat, like we saw Aaron Donald do consistently all season long, he should be an MVP. Uh, I'd be damned if he played quarterback, he'd win multiple <laughs> MVPs, but he has to win one yeah. because he's that dominant. So if their second level can be dominant like Donald, they'll be fine. No, that was, that was exactly my point as well. They need to get more pressure. They need to get more sacks on defense. They had 33 last year. That's That was 24th in the league. Now, Aaron Donald is on this team with over half of those sacks. They only got 33. And Dominic Sue was on this team. They traded for Fowler was on this team. And they still finished 24th with only 33 sacks. They have to get more pressure, have to get more sacks. Hopefully, they can do that this season. If they do that this season, they're going to end up right back in the Super Bowl with a chance to take it home again. Yeah, because we talked about the Rams and their offense being able to put up points whenever they want to. Defensively, a few more turnovers, they can find themselves right back in a big game this February. I have the Rams finishing first in the NFC West. What's great about this squad is that both sides of the ball really work well with the person that's in charge of running. It's almost like they have two or three head coaches out there on game day. That, along with impressive talent across the board with depth, makes the Rams a serious contender to get back to the big game in February. So that's it for this season preview. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Be sure to follow me on all of our social media accounts. And don't forget to check out and subscribe to Football Game Plan Podcast on iTunes, where you can find our NFL All 32 podcast, our fantasy football starting lineup, as well as our scout team podcast, and leave us a five-star rating. Also, subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network located at youtube.com slash football game plan. Finally, every Thursday and Friday evening at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, be sure to check out the Football Game Plan Show on the Game Plus Network. Check with your cable provider for channel listings.